This video is brought to you by CoolStuffInc.com, where you can find cool stuff in stock. Hello, and welcome back to another day in the arena. It's me, it's CGB, today in the arena. We are attacking the meta from a new angle. We are playing Mono Green Tempo, except it's not Mono Green, because green doesn't have counter spells because something about the color pie remains intact here. Year of our Lord 2021. And what we have is a mono green beatdown deck featuring a couple of counter spells. So uh, the idea here is that the Great Henge is absolutely dominant in any kind of creature matchup. The only thing that really beats it are decks that play Binding the Old Gods, go over the top and cast ultimatums or do other big powerful things so we want to run all this stuff for the creature matchups because we should be able to win them but then on the other hand we need to be able to stop the big ultimatums from happening so we have three copies of miscast and two copies of negate to either stop the sweeper the spot removal spell or the ultimatum right in their tracks and a tiny blue splash to make it happen this takes us away from double green cards such as yorvo and it does make the mana more challenging than a monocolored deck normally should be, but with the help of Bark Channel Pathway, Fabled Passage, and a handful of islands, as well as Elysian Caryatid, which taps for mana of any color, hopefully we can bring it all together. It opens up some pretty cool things, like if you play Elysian Caryatid on two, which taps for one mana of any color, but if you have a creature of power four or greater, two mana of any color, and then on turn three you play a Lovestruck Beast, you now have Counterspell Protection as well as your Lovestruck Beast. Then the next turn, you can play the Great Henge and still have counter protection and start playing all kinds of big monsters. Maybe a Vorinclex to join the fray. Maybe an Anguirus Armored Killer, aka Gem Razor, on a Stone Coil Serpent or Swarm Shambler to get the damage in. The deck can be explosive, it can have the largest creatures on the board, it can draw the most cards, which is kind of funny, and with the ability to counter a few key spells, it can run away with the game very quickly. The idea for the deck actually came from something I think it was about two years ago, maybe more now. The Mythic Invitational, MTG Nerd Girl, and I prepared for it, and we both kind of got hooked on this green tempo list that was Galta and um, other large creatures like Steel Leaf Paladin, uh, along with Negate and Spell Pierce. We don't have Spell Pierce anymore, but we can try Miscast. And we don't have Steel Leaf Paladin or Galta, but we have Lovestruck Beast and Great Henge. So that's where the idea for the deck came from. And when a meta gets super polarized into here's the little aggro decks and here's the big over the top control deck, a tempo list is often a really good pivot. In the past, we had Simic Flash, which was a really good pivot. We also had Team or reclamation for a while which was a really good pivot something that runs down the middle of putting up pressure but buys maybe one extra turn with a well-placed spell the other cards that we run i run some tangled florahedrons mostly because i want to play them off the great henge i start with four i ended up with two by the end of the video so you'll see probably some games where i have a few more of these we have four scavenging news which i think is absolutely key in a number of matchups it's great against luris it is great when the opponent is playing rogues and it's still here and there you'll see a croxa deck pop up and sometimes you need to scavenge that sucker it's not particularly amazing against emergent ultimatum but we forgive it because the rest of the deck is doing that work gem razor don't forget the protection from multicolored it's really good against drown in the lock and binding the old gods also if you put it on a creature with plus one plus one counters like stone coil serpent then it is mostly heartless act immune as well combine that with the fact that now they're probably going to have to play something expensive like a sweeper but shadows verdict doesn't hit it they have to play extinction event and the fact that you can counter said extinction event and gem razor is a really quick clock that they're going to struggle to deal with Today's video is dedicated to the latest YouTube member, Edmund S.Z. Tramsky. Edward Edmund S. Thank you very much for joining the CKC. I appreciate you guys a lot. And we're going to quickly do a dedication here. Let me see where we're at on our snow covered lands that we're buying. I think we're getting close. Okay, forest is, is another forest still up for grabs. So let's grab this beauty. Nope. Gold. Gold. Gold, then gems. Boom. All right. Now we've dedicated the video. We've talked about its origins and the card choices. Let's dive in. 
let the green tempo nonsense begin. All right, we've got the love struck beast. Let's go. The gem razors need something to go on to, though. But our miscast has its opportunity to shine, fighting Yorian. Begin the assault. Take one. Fortel, nice. Beastie! Let's go. Okay, mana open. What could it be? I don't know. Save this for a mammoth. It's a lot of damage. Probably time time to start holding up our counter magic. They have counter magic. It's weird. No stick. Stick with this on the stack. It's kind of bizarre. Cultivate. Hmm. I think that's fine, and the next turn the miscast wins the game, potentially, so that's a really tempting target. But their double swamps here mean that next turn they're probably going to try a verdict. And we'd feel pretty bad if they had extinction event after that. Wipe out all of our one ones. Okay. Let's get feisty. Down to two. Can you do it without casting an instant or sorcery? This is where miscast is better than mystical dispute. Mystical dispute, we would not be able to hold up. Got him. Got him. Green tempo. At work. Only took one, two, three, four cards. Fighting an actual pile of dirt. It was number 259, so definitely mono red. Never mind, rogues. Hard to decide what's dirt pilier, to be honest. Um, but we've got a great henge draw. Against rogues, is that gonna work? Maybe with the miscast. We've gotta give it a shot. We have to give it a chance to be good. And we're on the play, which I have never been on the play so much in my life as I have with this deck the last couple of games, so can't be mad. Nylea's bow. How about that? Those sleeves are sweet. Not much of a green mage, but that's a pretty sweet one. Opponent already took one mulligan. They're thinking about the second. They've made their determination. Here we go. Hmm. Elysian carry added. Let's go plant. It's our blue source, so please don't kill it. Meow, it's Enforcer. Okay, we lost our blue sources off the top. And they were untapped too. Like, the curve was about to get perfect. We really need to untap with this so it can defend itself. Or others. And it looks like they can't remove it yet, maybe? Okay. Here we go. Unfortunate that we don't have the untapped land for this. Let's pump it up. So close to good. Untapped land there would have been so good. They cling my passage to draw. 
Okay. They thinking. Got him in the tank now. I really hope that they try to, like, let me play Get Right Henge and they can try to negate it or something. Uh, yeah, uh, yeah, we know what you're thinking. We know. We know. Mind games, let's do it. <laughs> Rogue's thinking. What else is new? Take three. Nothing. Nice. This taps for two once this is a 5-5. Five five. But we still want blue. So I guess we're playing this, pumping this that way. And then we have one, two, three, four, and blue. Timing, I guess. Grasp of darkness. Didn't see that one coming. Oh, they're an asshole too. Lovely. All right, how best to destroy them? I guess we can play this tapped and play this gem razor, which is kind of a pain in the butt. We can also just play this gem razor. We still can't hold up miscast. No kidding. Okay, snap into the story. Now they have to beat Henge. Guess I can't hold up the ram through. Oh well. Or not the ram through, the uh, miscast. Max, punish that into the story. Let's go. Let's go. So, have they seen my counter spells? They did see a negate. So they know of at least something they should play around. Now what they need to set up is like a lot of loops and the Luris to keep getting it back or maybe Agadim's Awakening. Yeah, the card advantage is real. It is real. You want to trade those? No? What to do next? Should probably make two mana with this while we can. Before they kill a 4-4. Play you. Henge does draw a lot of cards. That is the risky part. Man. I do not draw many lands, do I? Okay, let's go with this. Make more mana. We're gonna need it. We got all these sweet cards to play. Ooze. Ooze is a sweet one. Maybe now I do need to play some lands. Yeah, let's start trying to force some trades. Be aggressive. Be -e aggressive. That's it. <laughs> Try to kill both. Cause I'll take a little, I'll lose my gem razor to deal more trample damage. What else you got? Might have been a little impatient, but I think this much pressure, it's worth it. 
and it takes their millers off the board. Since I can't hit my land drops, I'm going to play this one, since we seem to have a lot of cards going. Gotta get this Scavenging Ooze online. Gotta make the opponent respect our other creatures. If they target anything with a counter on it, we get 1-1s one from the Swarm Shambler. They're at 5. How do they get out of this? They attack for a point. This could be a Crippling Fear. If they are a Crippling Fear gamer, I know I have become one when I play Rogues, but I don't know if the world is going to follow me on that tra trajectory. They just seem very res resistant to changing their precious Rogue deck. This person is trying Grasp of Darkness to hate on some indestructible stuff. Crippling Fear would be the next step. I don't know, this this player doesn't strike me as someone who's played a new card in recent ever. Wall Mage Domination, yep. And I, I, what I mean by that, they're 259 Mythic. They know their deck inside and out. They don't mess with it. They just grind it every day like a machine. Counter that? No. No counter on that? Okay. Nice draw. How about this? You're going to counter this? Nope, can't counter that. Cool. Shall we rumble? Opponent blocks here, take five and die. So they're probably flashing in some kind of a creature. In which case, let's see, what are they doing? How many do we have there? 15, it's a lot. What if we just Hmm. If they're not going to resolve a spell. So what they're relying here is a Soaring Thought Thief to come in, right? And they want to trade this with that. What if we just don't? What if we just get bigger? Eat our graveyard? Eh, lame. Lame. Let's go. Take that damage. No Soaring Thought Thief. Looks like it's a removal spell to try to stay alive. <laughs> it makes two 1-1s. One cool. Get out. Away with you. Aw, oh, they're nice. Okay. I'll give them, give them a heart, even though they're rogues. I should probably thrash them more ruthlessly for you guys, for the entertainment. It's a hand. We're finally on the draw. Everything looks so much scarier. But it's a curve. It doesn't have any big booms, though, and no great hinge either, so could be tough. Opponent plays Castle Freakin' Ardenvale and Radiant Fountain, so they're on a bad life gain hand. They didn't mulligan it. It's interesting. I do want to grow this. At the same time, I want to get more creatures down. The Skyclave Apparition is usually their removal. So I think I want to save this until there's a creature in the yard. So I think we ramp with Florahedron here. Having extra mana later will make this easier to grow. So what you got? You got a Heliod? Because I would trade this for the Heliod and then Scavenging Ooze it. Okay, we got the scaven we got the Skyclave Apparition and they took out the Ramper. Would I trade the Shambler? I guess not. Well, two creatures in the graveyard does let Ooze go straight to work. Nah, this gets better. Gets better with age. All right. Let's make him think about that. Nah, we want a green open just in case something dies. That's enough land. 
They might have another app since they snap that off so fast, but I'm hoping they don't. We are flooding a bit. Okay, Loris is here, but facing the ooze. It's interesting. Savior is here, but facing the ooze. So do you attack? That would be a mistake. All right, not with the app. App could attack. They choose no. Let's grow the shambler. And we want to start forcing things to die. We can save this for a mammoth. Protection from Luris. Can't get protection from the bounty, so... Or bounty can't save you from a stone coil is what I mean. So the staring match begins. We need to find Great Henge pretty quick. And they need to find no more Skyclaves. Also, Heliod's a problem. Speaker of the Heavens is a big problem. Daxos is not great, but at least now Gemraiser has some things to feed on. Okay, that's their hand. They have some good top decks, but their hand isn't going to beat us. Because their hand just can't really do anything here. We can't do anything either. Another Shambler. Let's bring it out. There's no attacks here because of the Daxos. Let's hold on to the Serpent. We'll make it as large as we can when the time comes, but it's not going to get through Daxos anytime soon. That's a really good card. That makes things really hard because every turn Daxos is going to get bigger, so we're not going to outscale it. We have a little bit of a version of our own in Chambler. Let's see, if they gain a life, it gets bigger. If it gets bigger, though, we eat with ooze. Is that good? Not good enough, right? I think we'll just take it for now. They're on 27, so if they draw Speaker of the Heavens, we are already in a bad place. Oh my goodness. If we attack them with a 4-4, what do they do? Not much. Like, what are they going to do here? Nothing that Ooze can't handle. They gain a lot more life than us, so they win by racing, so they're not too afraid of that. By the way, enough land. Enough. Enough. Alright, let's go five. So that we still have a way to pick off a dog if it goes to the graveyard. And if nothing goes to the graveyard, we activate the Shambler, so we use the mana. Opponent draws a land. They power the Daxos. Daxos attacks maybe? No. Doesn't want to tangle. Tangled. My goodness, our draw is not good. Um, theirs is medium, but theirs is... I think theirs is arguably better than ours. Maybe I'm supposed to hold that because it's not really doing much on the battlefield for a henge to get the engine started as soon as we draw it. Yeah, I wish I'd held that. We'll try to remember that for the next one. Radiant Fountain up to 26. Luminarch Aspirant going on Daxos. The good news is Daxos takes it from a gem razor. No, I'm not thinning the deck with passage. 
Still might need it for a mammoth. Everybody knows when you thin with passage, you immediately draw more land. That's just the facts. Okay, let's hold that. Actually, no, we play it because our opponent could draw Skyclave Apparition and try to turn on their Lurus engine and Ooze keeps that from happening. Off the top, who's going to draw a good card first? Okay. Ugh. All right. Shambles versus Luminarchs. You know what would be nice here? Vorinclex. Vorinclex would be hot. They are just committed to Daxos. I mean, that's a big butt. That's an epic bootay. But they are afraid of attacking. Interesting. Beastie Beastie. I mean, do we just play it out? Like I said, slow rolling for Henge doesn't sound the worst. What does a beast even do to this board? Basically nothing? I, I guess it might discourage them even more from attacking. Man, our miscasts and our negates are not looking like good top decks, are they? So, are you going to draw something good? That's broken. I don't want to play this game anymore. <clears throat> Yorian, but we're on the draw. Ugh. I guess we try to draw land. We do have some good cards against them, like Gem Razor, Vorinclex, something to put the Gem Razor on. We do need to draw land. All right. It would also be nice to draw the counter spells we splash for in the matchup we splash them for, but I'm not going to get my hopes up because Magic Arena hates me today. Blue, black, there's a hinge. Let's pump the shambler. Let's fetch another green. And it looks like Demir control here. That's really rude. Yep, I guess I lose. Everything I do today gets punished. Every single thing. Jesus. All right, let's set up. The opponent's gonna have to take the negate, which might be good because maybe they can't deal with the gem razor. Oh, they probably can. They probably have like a million things to deal with this. Like our surprise, our, our element of surprise is completely gone. That That sucks. But they take the Henge. They're going to try to play around the Negate. Wow, full-blown rope here. Granted. Granted fetch what? They can fetch a Duress later to beat the Negate. That says Scatter, huh? See, if we play this, they kill it, almost certainly. Essence Scatter's a weird one. So they must have a plan to kill this Stone Coil. So I guess we just play Chicken with them. I mean, they can eventually just play this. Yeah. They want this to happen, but I think we have to go for it. At least it plays around like Shadow's Verdict, but yeah. Pretty bad spot, but maybe they have to tap a lot of mana to do this, and then we can resolve the other Gem Razor, and then we can have a fight over the Henge or the Vorinclex someday. Yep, there's the Extinction Event. Okay, we need a land. 
We don't get it. Oh, man. Magic is brutal. All right, on the play with three lands. Who curves out better, everybody? Is it the play or the draw? Hmm? It's supposed to be the draw, but I'm, I swear, I miss land drops on the draw. Maybe it's because I'm on the draw all the time. But I, I swear to God, the number of times like my opponents on the play curve out to five lands easily and I'm like stuck on three is, it's a lot. It's a lot. Getting to draw an extra card should make that more likely. Our opponent's in on the world tree, huh? All right, ooze. Gonna be a long time before the ooze can get big. So can I draw some of those counter spells in the spot where I'm on the play in a matchup where they're good? Because it's been a minute. All right, opponent snaps off a Heartless Act like they know I have counter spells in my deck. Interesting. I'll play the Florahedron next turn uh, if I draw another land to set up for an early Vorinclex. For now, let's play the larger threat and attack the opponent with it. Also makes a Gem Razor look good. Maybe they'll play a Saga of some kind. Or a Haven. Aw, Gem Razor, where were you? That was your moment, Gem Razor, and you missed it. Snap off the Omen, okay. I mean, we can hope their removal is based around Sagas. They snapped off that Heartless Act, but they took this hit from the Stone Coil and Enchanted, so I don't know. I don't know what's going on. Oh, there was Negate on top. Of course there was. All right. So do we want to play, like, Lovestruck Beast and make them answer that, then follow up with Vorinclex? Probably. Although, if this dies, the Vorinclex is can't come down, so yeah, we'll do this now. Serve them up nine. Make them have the answer. I mean, this is just going to be like an ultimatum, but it shuts down a lot of what their ultimatum can do. Okay, Yorian, that's uh, good. Can't block this. Chumps against this. They also don't have enough mana for this to make any color, so right now it's enchanting the world tree, but that just gives them double green. That doesn't do anything. And they dig. What do they find? Two to the bottom. Another stone coil. Yeah, the pressure's real. Down to three. Have a 10 10. They say good game. What are you gonna do? Turns on all the colors. You're gonna bind the old gods? They good game me twice. I mean, I don't know if they're for real. I'll offer a heart, but I don't believe you. Okay, I believe you. I believe you. Binding the old gods never looked so bad. On the play, double Vorinclax, no counter spell, Yorian. Let's see what happens. Both the Vorinclexes in the deck, both of the six drops. So we need to draw land. We do not draw land. Wish me luck. I don't like where this is going at all. 
Eh, got them. But now they know about the double Vorinclex that's coming at them. Yeah, nice, I know, I know. Let's go. We did draw land. Should have played this one instead, but it is what it is. Any miscast, any negate, while we have a creature down is going to be so helpful. Can we have that, please? Okay, a carry added. Well, we should try playing that first so the opponent can't remove the beast. Well, they'll kill the beast if they can, but we play this in case for some reason they can't kill this, but can kill that with like a brazen borrower. Okay, nice. Okay, next turn we Vorinclex them unless they do something about the carry added or the beast. And if they don't do something about, if they do something about the beast, hmm, they can sweep the board, but they can't hit everything. Tapped land, you love to see it. You love to see it. Oh man, do we go for Vorinclex into the open mana? Sexy Clexy. We didn't come this far to not do this. <laughs> Where are you at? Where are you at, 12 life? Make a 1 1 shark. Okay, okay. You love to see it. You love to see it. All right. Uh, I don't know how you sweep all this. You can Shadow's Verdict. You can Extinction Event on even. We've got the Swarm Shambler. Ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, children of all ages. We could mutate this on here and it would ruin it. And I was tempted to do it to blow up their omen. And then I wouldn't be able to attack. So <laughs> got the job done. The miscast ugh, on the draw with a bad hand. Okay. Um, maybe I'm supposed to mull that. I, I just believe there's a hinge in my future, you know? I'm in a matchup where it's not good. Look, the hinge. All right. So show me a Luminarch Aspirant. And I'll show you my concession button. Daxos. Whoa, really? Do we take that? I don't think so, because I think what I'm going to do is play this tapped land and grow this shambles. Because we have to then play Mammoth, and we have to draw another land and play Henge. They found a savior, of course. 22. Just you? No blocks. Snow White life gain. So if they had Sky Maul, they would play it. So what are they holding? Might be some good four drops there. We can go after the Daxos. They save it with the dog. What if they remove this with a giant killer? I think Giant Killer's kind of likely, so I really want to wait till Miscast is available, so let's play you. There's a chance if we topped at the land that we can go for Henge, but I also might still keep playing around Giant Killer. I'm trying to put together their hand and what they do where all they did last turn was play a savior, right? I mean it's possible they're slow rolling a Lurus, but I don't see why they would. No good attack. Yeah, mana open. That's got to be a giant killer, right? So if we counter the giant killer, we can't play the hinge. So I think we go for the gem razor here, too. We could also go for ram through. That would get their attention, I think. Let's go for this.
Blow up your Daxos. Opponent lets it go. They don't give it indestructible. Okay. So that lets us attack. With a lot. That island has to have them nervous. Yeah, look how nervous they are. All right, that or they don't have the giant killer. It's possible. If they get rid of the gem razor with a skyclave apparition, we need to draw a land to play the henge. They got Halvar. Halvar is not bad, but there's nothing enchanted or equipped at the moment. We'll never, I mean, maybe we'll find out, but at this fate, at this point, we don't know if playing around the giant killer was correct or not. And I don't know if we ever will, but I don't have a lot of regrets. You know what I mean? All right. Let's see, we could attack. We can't attack with a 3-3, though. It's an easy block. And I can't double up the damage. So I think it's just... Hmm, the opponent would make it indestructible, though. Do I get aggressive here? The reach might really matter. The opponent might be saving the savior and the halvar to double up with a maul of the skyclaves, which could be brutal. I guess we can try to get them to spend it now. But if we don't have a block, we could just lose. And I have the henge now. I should be defensive. I should be defensive. A long game, I should be able to win. I just need to make sure that they don't punk me out with some Halvar Skymall nonsense. Rudain. Doesn't really affect me. Now that the hinge is in play, it won't hurt me. Another Daxos. Opponent with a little interesting ordering. No giant killer. No giant killer, but now they're tapped out with no attacks. If we wait a turn, well, I think we just want to play. I think we want to play the henge. I also don't really want to do this until the savior can also be eaten from the graveyard in case of Luris. So we'll do this. Make it bigger. So we'll make this a five. <laughs> let's get, let's get Swall. This will also shut down their Luminarch Aspirants. And I get double counters on my Gem Razor. See, this gets blocked here, which is no good. This is tough to block, but it can be killed. Like, they could throw everything in front of it, and they have a savior. So let's wait. It gets better if we wait. It really does. Once we have the ram throughs to back this up, they're not going to be able to find good blocks. They did find their Sky Maul. Let's see where they put it. Double strike secured. Okay. We have a 9-9 reach, though. Do they know about the 9-9? This hits for 12. Hmm. And they can give it indestructible, but if they do, if the dog is dead, we throw those ram throughs, right? Redane wants to come in as well. Um, what if we just block the Redane? We want that dog to go. Would they s Hmm. Taking 12. Did you forget Gem Razor as reach? They always do. 
All right, we got rid of the dog. Next turn's gonna be a just. Next turn's gonna be a massacre, baby. Oh no! Oh no! <laughs> Not like this. Not like this. They're all gonna die. They're all gonna die. <laughs> oh no, the apocalypse is here. <laughs> the mono white apocalypse has come. <laughs> oh, some beatdowns are worth waiting for. Oh, baby. And we are back for the post-game wrap-up. And check this out. We did okay. <laughs> uh, there were definitely a lot of draws that felt clunky where it's hard to forgive the deck uh, when you're sitting on a miscast that you never get to cast and you end up losing to somebody who plays a bunch of creatures because you never draw a great henge or your mana doesn't li line up the way you want to and you're using Fable Passage on three and you can't play your mammoth. Like... It's easy to say, well, I'm scrapping the deck and I'm never playing it again and I'm going to play mono green. End of story. But then there are those games, you know the ones, where you negate the ultimatum, you miscast the extinction event, and you say, how could I ever go back? A little bit of counter protection for my aggro deck was all I ever needed. Just a little bit more blue and absolutely everything and... Uh, Life is easy. So, the deck has its charms. I think that there are some people who are going to get excited about something like this, since I don't think Mono Green on its own holds up in the meta. This is a way to play the Great Henge, but not necessarily lose to Emergent Ultimatum. And I think there are other people who are going to think this is an absolute abomination of the pure and simple beauty that is, I play one color and I play some creatures. And I understand. I understand. Man, winning is fun when it's easy, but sometimes there's nothing wrong with brewing, messing around, doing some experimentation, and trying to find a solution. I don't think I solved the meta by any stretch, but I think that this does open up some other options. Maybe there are some other tempo lists I can try out. I've got something in mind with Toski and some flying creatures and some tempo, some counter spells, so we'll probably give that a try. But for this video, I give this deck like a below C. I wouldn't try to mythic with it unless it's 100% your jam, like your kind of thing. Thank you for watching this video. As always, I will see you in the next video. Be cool. No, that's not what I say. That's a movie. You're cool.